Hi there, and welcome to this UCAMX 2021.12 release video. My name is Sylvia Lima, and I am with Nucampo, Belgium. I would like to take you on a quick tour through a number of features and enhancements. I will use the official release notes to show the highlights of this version. In addition, I will show a live demo for some of these highlights. Let's start with the extensions for all parts of our yellow adjusters. We start with our yellow copper adjuster. We extended the adjustments to handle the copper in relation to non-plated bolts and non-plated slots. This will reduce the manual handling in CAM and production even more than before. Let's see how this works. And up to the live demo of how the adjustment of non-plated holes is working. Here we have a layout with the copper in red and the non-plated holes in green. And if I have a closer look at the layout, I see that here the non-plated hole is bigger than the copper opening. So we would drill directly through copper. In this case, there is a small copper pad inside of the non-plated hole. That's not a good idea for tenting process. Here we have the issue of a copper pad, which is slightly bigger than the non-plated hole. And here we have a box-sized copper area which is bigger than the non-plated hole. If we open the copper adjuster and have a look at the settings, I have a parameter set for the non-plated and you can see I only set values for the non-plated holes, the slots, to wire pad and non-wire pad. I have the same value to trace and to region. I go to the adjustment parameters and only have the region and uh, the region shape and the plane adjustment active. And then I can go to verify and adjust and it will find the errors and directly will solve them. Okay, no more errors are available and the net compare found no errors. The net compare is always running at the, uh, at the end of the process to make sure nothing is broken up in the net list. And if we have now a look at the results, you directly see that in this case, the copper was shaped free around the non-plated hole. In this case, the slightly bigger copper pad is removed here. The small copper pad is removed and here we had the uh, copper region with where the copper opening was smaller than the drill hole. This is changed too, so we have enough copper-free area around the non-plating holes. In the release notes, you can directly see the results I showed you in the live demo. So the pictures before with a small description and the solution, and so on. The next adjuster on our list is Yellow Legend Adjuster. The Legend Adjuster got a new feature which redundantizes the adaption on aperture sizes when scaling works. In the image gallery, you directly can see what happens with the original text size and line width if you select to not change the line width, you see the line width stays the same, the word is getting much bigger. Or if you choose to scale the line width together with the word size. I will show the scaling of the aperture size together with scaling all words with this job. In this case, the sixth screen or legend is in red. 
I put the solder mask below it in green. And we now open our legend adjuster. First, I, of course, have to recognize all the text. I can see directly where my text is. In the setup and the verify, I can define the minimum line width I would like to have and the minimum line length in case of clipping. I can define that I want to have adherence to areas free of mask. That's the reason why I'm using the solar mask. And now I already can go to adjust, but to make sure we can see very good, I will open one of the texts a bit more and will give the new change in aperture size. So you see here that I toggle it on. I want the aperture size be, to be scaled with the scaling for scale or words. So I make a, a very big change. So three times was it what it was. And if I scale all words, you see the line width is changed directly to the size of the scale factor. If I go back and I don't have that toggled on and I scale all words, you see the line width stays the same as it was before, but it will always be at least the minimum line width specified in the setup and verify tab. The last adjuster on our yellow list is the yellow mask adjuster. Our mask adjuster is growing fast. Thanks a lot to all the feedback we got from you while we had the better version available for testing. The latest development is the adjustment for non-plated holes. If we now have a closer look at the new adjustment for non-plated holes, we see that the GUI of mask adjuster is already quite big and all the things we already developed in previous versions are in there and the non-plated handling is directly below the tombstone and solar escape prevention. We have a possibility to specify the ring for the opening of the mask around the hole. And we have the possibility to uh, specify if mask adjuster should ignore rings which are already bigger than the set value. Let's have a look at the layout. I have a mask in here and four non-plated holes. And I would put the copper below so we have a better overview. Let's have a look at the single Holes. So here we see that the mask opening is smaller than the non-plated hole. In this case, we see it is bigger and with the measuring it, I have a ring which is 0 0.15. In this case, the mask opening is the same size of the non-plated hole, and here we don't even have a mask opening. If I now open the mask adjuster and have a look on the non-plated handling, you see I specified a ring of 0.1 millimeter, and I specified that bigger rings should be ignored. Let's do the adjustment. I don't have a bottom mask defined for this test. Here you see now the mask opening is bigger than the plated hole. And if I go there and measure that, I have exactly the 0.1 millimeter opening. 
here, the same, 0.1. Here it was already bigger, so it should be still bigger, and it is 0.15 millimeter as it was before. That's it for the functionality of the adjustment for non-plated holes. In the release notes, again, you have an overview over the issue with a small description and the different solutions. Based on your feedback, mask adjuster will be developed in the upcoming releases. Now we are leaving the yellow adjusters. One of the highlights we have in this release is DXF input. We added ellipse and spline to our DXF input. You will be able to handle a much bigger variety of DXF files now. The next optimization I would like to show is happening in the route manager. This optimization gives you a higher flexibility to create overlaps. It's much more comfortable. The position of the overlaps is now selectable via mouse click. But this is easier to show than to explain in words. So I will give a small demonstration. To explain the optimization of the insert overlap, I have this with a simple route and if I select everything on the route you see it is four draws, four arcs. If I now want to create an overlap I use the route manager, go to the simple overlap, I select the size of the overlap I want to have and then I can click anywhere I want. So if I go now here with my mouse and click, you see that the overlap is directly placed where my mouse is. And if I have a look at the numbers, I can measure the points from there to there and see it is exactly five millimeters. That is much better than before. It's easier to handle, so you are more flexible to place your overlaps. The next extension to our software you can find in Transform Objects. Finally, we provide the undo redo functionality for corner modifications in the VGA Tracks tab as it was asked for a lot of times by you. This extension makes the handling much easier and gives the option to test the modification first and undo if it is not as expected. To show how the extension for transform objects with the undo redo functionality is working, I will use a simple track bundle I go to my Transform Objects EGA Track tab and for example I put in some chamfers on the corners, in this case with the snap to point, and I can put them in and see hmm, that's not looking very nice. So now I have the possibility to go either to Edit Undo or I use the toolbars or of course the shortcuts. So in this case, I do an undo, use a fillet because I think that may, might be better. So I can simulate and decide if it is better or not. If I don't like it, I can use an undo. Or if I want to have it back, I can do a redo. The next topic on our highlight list is the inkjet output. This was created to support the so-called Sprint Machine. If you are interested, please feel free to contact our support people for more information. We are already on the last highlight of our list, the extension to our ODB++ output. 
There is software on the market which is not able to handle ARCs in ODB++ profiles. This extension enables you to expand the ARCs to work around these limitations. I will show that in the last live demo of this video. The extension to ODB++ output is a new option in the cut resource file. Output arcs in job outline layer either as true arcs or as approximated by straight lines. To show how this is working, I will use this small job. If we have a closer look at the outline layer, you see that we have four arcs in here. Or if I select everything on this layer, I get the information that I have four draws, four arcs, which are building one region. If I now go and have a look at the cut resource file, we have the new key in there, odbxx asterisk profile underscore exp underscore arc, and it's set to one. That means the arcs will be expanded. If you want to have the information, of course, you can search in our help. So if I now go to our output cut, I have the resource file in the background and it is running. Then I go there and import the output back into UCAM. We see the new ODB profile, and in the profile we see we have no arcs anymore, but we have 128 draws. The 128 draws are the four original ones and the ones to build the arc. So, but no real arcs anymore. I go back to the original job and now we will change the key to zero. That means the arcs should be preserved. I do a new output. <coughs> Read in the output again. Again, we have our profile layer. And if I now have a look there, I have my arcs in there. So select all again four draws, four arcs, which build a region. This is the way to work around the limitations of the software that cannot handle arcs in an ODB++ profile. Now we are at the end of the tour through the highlights of UCAMX 2021.12 release. In addition, UCAMX 2021.12 comes with a host of fixes for issues you have cared to report. Please keep on doing so. Your feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you very much. The installer can be downloaded from the UCAMCO FTP download server. As most internet browsers have stopped supporting FTP download, we recommend that you use an FTP client to do so. We recommend installing this update at your earliest convenience. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to contact our support. They will be happy to lend a hand. That is all from me for now. Thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.